Ted Lasso was the breakout series of the season, winning an Emmy for Best Comedy Series as well as Best Comedy Actor Award for its lead actor Jason Sudeikis. The popular series depicts Sudeikis as Ted Lasso, a clueless American who finds himself in the UK trying to coach a London football team. But what makes this series so hilarious? Keep watching to find out the funniest moments from Ted Lasso. First one, the character's catchphrase. If you've seen the series, you probably already know who we're talking about. When we first meet Danny Rojas, he's screaming his catchphrase, football is life, a phrase that we'll hear him say quite a few times throughout the show. At the beginning of season two, the football team's loyal and lovable mascot, a greyhound named Earl, is chasing a pigeon and accidentally gets hit by Danny's penalty shot, resulting in the change of his catchphrase from football is life to football is death. The whole situation is sad, but still darkly humorous in a way that only the most smartly nuanced comedy can pull off. Next, Sam's date night haircut. The haircut scene was a favorite among fans, who were happy to see the interaction between Sam and Isaac, two characters who are not featured quite as prominently on the show, but provide a lot of comedic value and will likely be given bigger plot lines as the show progresses due to their popularity. Sam, played by Tohib Jamal, is a friendly and enthusiastic Nigerian, who we see in season two prepping for a date. The haircut takes place in the locker room with the whole team around while down by the riverside by Mahalia Jackson plays. It's an interesting departure from the makeover scenes we normally see on TV, although it will be a familiar one to any group of guys who has ever had that one friend who becomes the barber of the friend group. If you know, you know. Then, when Ted gets Roy to read a wrinkle in time, Ted Lasso and Roy Kent have one of the most hilarious dynamics on the show. We see this early on when Ted gives all the football players books meant to inspire them and gives Roy with Madeline Lianglais a wrinkle in time. Roy decides that the gift of the novel, a story about a little girl who struggles with embracing leadership and saving her family, is part of an elaborate mind game the coach must be playing with him as the two have been at odds ever since they met. He reads the book to his niece as a bedtime story and later finds that he has in fact learned something about leadership. One Easter egg in the series comes in season two when we see Sam Obisano reading the same copy of A Wrinkle in Time. Next, how Londoners think of Americans. Ted must be homesick, saying the lawnmower must be the closest thing he can find to a Dodge Ram, although the two form more of a bond as the show goes on. Roy's ongoing snarky comments never fail to get a laugh. And then we have Leslie Higgins, the man without a desk. AFC Richmond's director of communications, Leslie Higgins, DIY offices, are pure comedic relief. When player Danny Rojas needs to see a sports psychologist to heal from some trauma he experiences, Higgins nicely gives up his office to allow her room to work, setting up a makeshift office in the corridor outside. Without an office, Higgins goes through season two creating DIY offices wherever he can, starting with a small side table in Rebecca's room, then the gym, and ending up working out of a supply closet by the end of the season, along with his laptop and his trusty plant. Next, we have Trent Krim, the independent. Trent Krim is a serious journalist, and he won't let you forget it. When introducing himself, he's always Trent Krim, the independent. When at the end of season two, he gets fired from his job at the independent, it shows just how much his identity was built around his former career and is a point of major character development, although it's still funny. Then we have the fact that Ted Lasso doesn't know anything about football or the UK. Some of the funniest moments on Ted Lasso come from the fact that the American coach doesn't know anything about the sport or England as a whole. His ignorance of the culture and the rules and terminology of the sport are one of the ongoing jokes of the series. For instance, Ted refers to the pitch as a field and he remembers the goalie as being the guy with Mickey Mouse hands. One of the funniest scenes in the show comes in the finale when AFC Richmond has to beat strong competitor Manchester City. During the match, we see just how much Ted Lasso has learned about football and how much he has it. He pulls out the Lasso special as a last-ditch effort to pull ahead of the opposing team, but it turns out that his secret play is a crossover of American football and soccer, as if he never quite understood which type of football he was meant to be coaching to begin with. The players form themselves into a classic American football formations, and at one point, the keeper calls out hike, confusing the British audience watching from a nearby pub. While it seems like things are going their way, they do ultimately get relegated, but it is still a hilarious sports scene and one of the longer sports sequences throughout the series. Next, Ted Lasso's take on tea. You know what? I was right. Ted is never able to get over his disgust at the taste of tea and carries on throughout the show with these comments. He also explains scones to his son as being like a dry muffin that sucks all the spit out of your mouth. Then, when Jason Sudeikis splits his head open, we don't know why 
blank physical comedy is so funny, but it never fails to entertain. While filming one scene where Ted is leaving Rebecca's office, Jason Sudeikis jumped and hit his head on the door frame, splitting it open in real life and requiring medics to super glue the wound shot. The scene made it into the show, and Jason was okay in real life, so he really took one for the team with this one. That's just what it takes to make a truly funny comedy. Next, Roy Kent coaching the Richmond Primary School children's football. Roy Kent is known to be somewhat intense, both on and off the football pitch. When he temporarily retires from playing football, he takes up coaching a primary school children's team, and it makes for some hilarious material. We come to find out that Roy's six-year-old niece, Phoebe, is on the team as well, a fact that doesn't dissuade him from his unusual manner of swearing and losing his temper. The dynamic between Roy and Phoebe is one of the best on the show. In season two, we see Roy search the neighborhood for a dentist on Christmas Day after a schoolmate tells Phoebe she had bad breath, and her uncle is determined to help her resolve the situation, including his threat to beat up the child who made the comment to her in the first place. Finally, we have the introduction of Ted's evil alter ego, Led Tasso. In season two, Ted Lasso is struggling with inspiring his team, and so decides to bring back a trick from his days coaching back home in America. Normally known as a nice, easygoing guy, Ted comes out as the terrifying Led Tasso. His overly tough and demanding inner counterpart, who we are clued into by the fact that he's wearing sunglasses. Ted Lasso gets more and more tyrannical, running the team's morale into the ground, ordering them to do nonsensical exercises like touch each other's toes and kicking the balls away from them as they try to practice. His suddenly Hulk-like behavior goes on until his assistant pulls his sunglasses off, which causes Ted to snap back to reality with no memory of his time as lead. Jason Sudeikis said he did so much yelling for this scene that his voice was actually shot at the end of the day. This scene is relatable, as we've all had a lead tasso inside of us that we wish we could let out from time to time. So there you have it. These are the funniest moments so far from Ted Lasso. This series is definitely worth binging, and we can't wait to tell you all of the funniest moments from season three. Who do you want to see more of? Let us know in the comments section down below. As always, thanks for watching.